What is happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I truly appreciate it. Got to rep the Scat Pack Super B here because we still have the Destroyer Gray in the garage. But in today's video, we're going to be doing something on the Hellcat that I have waited 1500 miles to do. <laughs> You may have guessed it. Well, the final step of the break-in period is complete on the Hellcat. I just passed 1,500 miles. I'm about 1,530 right now, and I have waited. I have waited to film my first reaction of me driving pedal to the floor in this car. Now, I'm not going to go crazy on it. Obviously, I need to take this to a drag strip or some racetrack to really realize the full potential of the Hellcat engine. But I definitely want to see you know, how it drives when I put the pedal to the floor and see what happens because I still have not done that. From day one, I have babied this car. I kept it under 3,000 RPM, up to almost 1,000 miles. And then after that, I've been a little bit more free-spiritedly driving, but definitely not pedal to the floor, definitely not full wide open throttle. So that's gonna be my first time doing it and you guys are gonna see it in today's video. So let's hop into the car. Let's head down to Mexico where we're gonna test this vehicle out. And then I'm gonna talk to you guys about the break-in period of the Hellcat. Alright, so as we're heading down to Mexico, which is surprisingly only like a 20 to 30 minute drive from Utah, it's, I mean, I'm shocked about it as much as you are, but I guess the Hellcat helps get there a little bit quicker. But anyways, we just hit 1531 miles right there. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. And so we are pretty safe to be able to go pedal to the floor on this car and really see what it's all about. Now, I wanted to briefly discuss the break-in period on the Hellcat. And uh, I believe the same break-in period applies to the Scat Pack. So the 6.2 or the 6.4 liter engine has the exact same break-in period. And Dodge breaks it up in several different steps. Now, from the zero to 100 mark, Dodge wants you to make sure that you do not depress the accelerator more than halfway to the floor. That will prevent rapid acceleration acceleration and that just makes sure that the engine is broken in properly. They also recommend that you do not leave it idling at a certain RPM for a long period of time, but at the same time, they want to make sure that you keep it under 3,500 RPM from zero to 100 miles. They also want you to make sure you avoid aggressive braking. Uh, I think that just means that the brakes are going to wear in a little bit better. It has nothing to really do with the engine in my opinion. And the last thing they note is to keep the vehicle below 55 miles per hour. So once you pass 100 miles the next break-in period is from 100 to 300 miles now the 1 to 300 mark is very similar to the 0 to 100 except they've gotten rid of a few things and gotten a little bit looser on some others the first thing to note is they got rid of the restriction that you can't let it idle at a certain rpm for a long period of time so that's a nice thing the next thing is you can actually now take it up to 70 miles per hour so you can take it on the freeway and not worry about the engine break-in period and then you could also take it up to 5,000 rpm which is is pretty significant considering my car redlines at probably around 5,800 RPM. So that's almost the full range of RPMs on the Hellcat, so that's really nice. After that, you've got the 300 to 500 mile mark. Contrary to what you might expect, Dodge recommends utilizing the full range of the RPM scale of the engine. And it also mentions that you should manually shift when possible at the higher RPM. So it really kind of forces you to take it to the extreme and see what it feels like, but they do not recommend keeping the car at wide open open throttle for a very long period of time. So they're kind of urging you to, well, test it out a little bit, but don't go crazy on the Hellcat. And in this range, you can actually take it up to 85 miles per hour without a problem. So definitely all major highways in the US, you can take this car and you'd be fine with a break-in period. Now, the last step of the break-in period is from 500 to 1500 miles. And it's definitely the most lax and loose break-in period of all
all of the periods we just discussed. In this specific segment, you're just gonna avoid taking it to any track or sporting or drag strip events as much as possible, even though it's very tempting to take this car to a track and see what it's made of. Now, the way I interpret this is you're just gonna wanna make sure you don't go pedal to the floor for a very long period of time. And so that is the main reason why I haven't really gone hard on this car is because I know that when I start doing pedal to the floor activities, I'm probably going to keep doing them. And so it's probably best for me to wait until the 1500 mile mark is passed, at which point I'm definitely gonna experience this car for all of its glory. I do plan on taking it to a drag strip at some point next year, once hopefully things open up a little bit. Uh, and that way I can actually set some times and see what this car is really about. But for now, I wanted to make sure I waited 1500 miles, which is definitely over cautious and more than probably any other Hellcat owner has done. But since I've been forced that I've been able to take it on some road trips and put on a lot of miles very quickly, it's been nice for me to be able to get to that 1500 mile mark and not have to wait like six months for it to happen. You know, so if I end up selling this car in the future, there is evidence that I definitely baby this car for the first 1500 miles, which is more than anybody else that owns this exact same car. But like I said, I just wanted to be extra cautious because this is a very expensive car. And even though it's under warranty, any mechanical issues could show up further down the line when this car is out of warranty. And I'd blame my impatience for wanting to go pedal to the floor on this car before it was really ready to do so. But enough chit chat, we're about to get to Mexico, at which point we'll see what this car is really about and you guys will be able to see my first initial honest reactions opening up the throttle on this car all right so we just got to mexico and i am absolutely stoked to see what kind of power lays under the hood i'm not gonna go crazy or anything because it's 37 degrees right now outside and it's been raining and snowing over the past few days so the roads are definitely not primed for the best acceleration what i'll probably do in the future is a video closer to the summertime similar to what i did with the scat pack a few months ago and that way i can compare the acceleration between the scat pack and the hellcat under similar conditions because the air temperature is a lot cooler which is a lot better for an engine especially a supercharged one but at the same time the rear wheels are going to have a lot less traction because of the wet and cold roads that i'm driving on so stay tuned for that video that will probably come a little bit later Later next year when the temperature is a little bit warmer here in Utah but for now the moment we've all been waiting for to see is there really a big difference between the scat pack and the Hellcat in terms of just feeling emotions acceleration everything well that's what we're about to find out all right we're gonna put it in drive let's do a first run here and uh, see how it does <laughs> oh my god Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, alright, uh... <laughs> that was pretty insane. Um, definitely didn't have traction there, uh, but the way it shoots you back is unlike any other car I've ever driven in. Yeah, let's do that one more time and, uh, and see what happens. Alright, so we're gonna try this test one more time. And let's see how it does. Wow. Okay. Um, definitely have like a mini heart attack while I do that because I don't know where this car is going. It was definitely spinning out back there, but I don't blame it because it's 37 degrees, the roads are wet, they're cold, but the traction control really kept it steady really well. Like I wasn't scared at any point that I was gonna crash into a tree or a wall or anything. It handled itself very well. It just unfortunately wasn't putting any power to the ground. According to the zero to 60 timer, I actually did it in 4.8 seconds which if I'm remembering correctly, the scat pack, obviously in hotter temperatures, did around 5.9, 5.8 seconds. So this is already one second quicker with a novice like me driving it. So it can only get better from now on. My reaction time was a little bit slow. It was almost a second, it was 0.97. Again, I'm not doing a zero to 60 test. That will be a different video where I'm more trained on this car. This is simply just me having a hell of a fun time in a car I've always wanted to drive like this. That's what this test is about. And so far it's accomplished everything I wanted in this car. All right, so this time I'm actually gonna play around with the performance pages here and I am going to put it 
into track mode, which puts everything into track settings. And so we're gonna see if there's really a noticeable difference in track mode versus the auto mode that I was in earlier. All right, let's test this out and see what happens. Okay, so it uh, definitely got better traction that time. It was still spinning, but I felt like it kept it straighter down the road. My zero to 60 was 4.4 seconds. That's insane. I have never driven a car zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. That's, that's amazing. That's already a second and a half quicker than I ever did on the scat pack. I'll double check that and throw it up on the screen to confirm, but man, that is insane. I've never done that. That is. The reaction time also went down. It was 0.64 seconds this time, so that definitely improved the reaction time. But man, that is a hell of a ride. That is, oh man, you, you really gotta experience it yourself to really understand the difference. So far, I am noticing a difference with the scat pack. And I wouldn't necessarily say it's the zero to 30 or zero to 40. It's really from like 60 and up that you notice a dramatic difference in how this car accelerates. Like I mentioned in previous videos where I reviewed some of these Hellcats, the scat pack almost seems like it has a certain limit to its power. So once you hit a certain miles per hour, like let's say 60 or 70, you know, from 70 to above, you can't really notice a huge difference in the power delivery. Whereas in this Hellcat, it almost thrives in that 70 above miles per hour range. And I think that's the biggest difference between the Scat Pack and the Hellcat. Now, obviously the zero to 60 is also quicker as per these numbers on the performance pages. But in general, for me, what I'm noticing different is when you're above those 60 mile per hour speeds, that's where you're really noticing the power difference between a Scat Pack and a Hellcat. Let's try and do this one more time and see what happens. We're still in track mode. All right, let's try this one last time and see how it feels. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, that was definitely a little bit worse. Uh, I just couldn't hook up to the ground. That zero to 60 was five seconds. So that was definitely the worst one I've done. It must have been just the area where I was accelerating. It just wasn't as dry or for whatever reason, my tires already smoked, I don't know. But that was definitely a worse time and my reaction time was 0.93. But regardless, I've had a blast filming this video. Probably the funnest I've ever filmed a video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell if you guys are new to the channel because this Hellcat isn't going anywhere and there's gonna be more and more updates and news on this car, so you gotta stay tuned for that. Also, find me on Instagram at Schwazy underscore, same as the YouTube if you haven't done so already. I try to post at least three or four times a week of this beast, and so that way you guys can stay in touch even more often than the YouTube channel. Like always, stay healthy, stay Schwazy, and have a wonderful day.